In this presentation, we'll discuss how taxes and last year's supply are related. Specifically, we'll discuss how supply elasticity determines tax burden or tax division among consumers and producers. We'll look at two extreme cases. One, when supply function is perfectly inelastic and when supply function is perfectly elastic. As elasticity of supply changes, the tax burden changes as well. Let's look at this case when the supply function is completely inelastic and we have a vertical supply function. The equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity are 3 and 12. Let's assume government imposes a sales tax on consumers of $1. What this does is shifts the demand function down vertically by the amount of the tax which is $1. So what we observe is the price still remaining 3. The new equilibrium price here now is $2. So the equilibrium price changed from 3 to 2. The equilibrium quantity remained the same at 12 units. Let's look at the tax burden on consumers and producers. So before tax, let's look at the first, the second column. Before tax, consumers paid $3 and producers got $3. After tax, producers get $2. But how much do the consumers pay? They pay $2 to the producers and $1 to the tax collecting agency or to the government and in total they pay three dollars. So the new equilibrium price is two, consumers pay two dollars plus one dollar which is their tax. So they end up paying three dollars. So for consumers there is no change in prices before and after but for producers there is a one dollar difference. And this $1 is the tax burden. The complete tax, which is $1, comes out of producer's pocket. And the reason is the supply function is inelastic. As you change prices, the supply doesn't shift or the supply doesn't move much. The quantity supplied remains the same at 12 units. Here we have an elastic supply function. And again, we have government imposing $1 sales tax. It shifts the demand function vertically down by $1. By $1. Now, the new equilibrium quantity is 10 units. The price hasn't changed, but the new unit is $10. This is how much is traded. This is how much is consumed and produced. This quantity at 10, consumers were willing to pay with the initial demand function $4. Yes, they were willing to pay a higher amount of $4. This difference is where the tax is going to come from. Let's look at tax burden. Before taxes, consumers paid three, producers got three dollars. After tax, producers still get three dollars and consumers pay the equilibrium price three dollars to producers plus one dollar to the government. And the tax burden is one dollar. So consumers, as a result, are now consuming less units. People with a higher willingness to pay are the ones that are actually buying the good. This is where the taxes are coming out from. Consumers are paying $4, producers are getting $3, and the difference is going to the government.